Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and this will be part one of four videos with applied quantitative practice paper three questions for the price floor model within microeconomics. You can find this video by searching here. Uh, you can search for price floor. You'll see a series of videos uh, regarding price floor models. You can also find it within the playlist for government intervention within microeconomics. Uh, I'll also have linked in this video uh, review videos on calculating the effects of price floors with abstract values and also explanations of the theoretical model. You can also find this video within the dedicated paper two, three calculations uh, playlist dedicated towards paper three type practice questions and also paper two practice questions for standard and higher level. So for our applied example, we're going to look at wheat production in the United States. Here on Wikipedia, we can see a list of countries and the quantity of wheat that's being produced in millions of metric tons, China being the number one producer in 2021, then India, Russia, the United States at 44.8 million metric tons in that year. Okay, so let's go ahead and start tackling these questions. So this video will be focused on answering question A, calculating changes in consumer surplus resulting from the imposition of the price floor. Um, and in the second video, we'll look at question B, and the third and fourth video, we'll look at question C. And those will also be linked in the video notes below. So let's go ahead. On a paper three, you could be provided a model like we have here with values on the X and Y axis. Here we have figure one. It illustrates the domestic market for the primary commodity of wheat in the United States. And we notice that on the Y axis, we're measuring price in US dollars per metric ton. And on the x-axis, we're measuring the quantity in millions of metric tons per year. Um, and then we are provide this model with the price floor already imposed. And it highlights for us the quantities supplied and demanded al along with the free market equilibrium price and quantity. So that could be a model that you might see on a paper three exam. So let's go ahead and start tackling question A. On an exam, I would be in the habit of kind of highlighting uh, key terms so that we're clear on what we're supposed to be doing. So here we're going to calculate the change in what? In the consumer surplus as a result of the government imposition of a price floor. So we're going to look at consumer surplus before and after the imposition of the price floor. Before we get started, let's kind of mark a few uh, uh, values here. We have the free market price where supply equals demand. And here it is 200, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're going up by units of 1. So 1, 2, 3. This is 230. So I'm going to mark that. You should do that on your test. It also highlights um, that to provide income support to weed farmers and stabilize domestic production, the U.S. central government has imposed a price floor of 290. All right. So we see that here. Here's 290. In addition, we can see that the demand intercept is at 450, 60, 70. So I'll mark that 470 there. And then the Y intercept for the supply curve is 50, 60, 70 right over here. Okay. Let's also mark some quantities. We can see that the free market quantity is at 24. All right, 24 kind of got on top of the 25 there, but it's 24 million metric tons. And then here, the quantity of demand has been reduced to 15, 16, 17, 18. And the quantity supply is increasing to 31 to 33 million metric tons. Perfect. So I would like you to pause the video and try answering question A, and then we'll check your workings with, with mine, and then, uh, and then we'll be at, at the end of the video. So go ahead and pause the video now. All right, so how did you do? Let's go ahead and calculate this. So first, we're going to look at the initial consumer surplus. And I want to see visually what that area looks like. So I know it's the area below the demand curve to the free market price. And I'm going to get this triangular area here that we see. All right. 
So that's the surface area that I want to calculate. And we know that the surface area of a triangle is the height times the base, and we're going to divide that by 2. So let's calculate that. The initial consumer surplus. So first let's figure out the height. The height is going to be equal to 470 minus 230. So 470 minus 230 is going to give me the height. And that height is 240. 240 is that height. Now I have the base. The base, I can see, the base is here. It's going up to that free market quantity of 24. So I'll simply do 240 times 24 million. All right, we're going to put N for million. And that's going to equal... Five thousand seven hundred and sixty million. And then I got to divide that by two because this is a triangle. So I'm going to divide that by two, and that's going to equal two thousand eight hundred and eighty million. All right. So there is the surface area of that first triangular area. I'm going to highlight that so I remember that that is my answer for that triangle. Now i got to figure out the final, the surface area of the final consumer surplus. So I'll use a different color. The final consumer surplus, again, it's going to be a triangular area. The price has been increased through the government intervention from 230 to 290. And what that does is, just for review, it's going to increase the quantity of supply. It's going to motivate, incentivize producers to increase their production at that higher price while costs of production are held constant. And that production will increase from 24 to 33 million metric tons. But on the consumption side, you're going to have consumers being demotivated to consume, and that is going to lead to a reduction in the quantity of demand from 24 to 18. Again, a movement along the demand curve from here to here. So I can also mark that um, 33 million metric tons is the quantity of supply, and 18 million metric tons is the quantity of demand. And here we have that excess supply in between. So the price has gone up from 230 to 290, and so I'm going to get a reduced surface area for the consumers. Consumer surplus will be reduced because we're paying a higher price, kind of less savings for the consumer. So I follow the demand curve to that new price. And here I see this new triangular area that I'm now going to calculate. So the height for that is going to be equal to, again, 470 is the y-intercept minus the higher price of 290. And that's going to equal 180. Fine, so there's my height. So I'm going to multiply 180 times the base. And the base has now been reduced to 18. So here we have 18 million. So 180 times 18 million is 3,240 million divide by 2 because it's a triangle and so that's going to equal 1620 million okay and so let's highlight that area okay and what I need to do is figure out the difference between them so the change the change in the consumer surplus will be equal to the final value of 1,620 million minus the initial consumer surplus of 2,880 million. And that's going to equal a decreased consumer surplus of minus, put negative, 
1,260 million. All right, and that could be my final answer. So I'll highlight that. That would be my final answer, that consumer surplus, the change. Consumers have experienced a reduction in the consumer surplus by 1,260 million. Fine. That's one way we can calculate this. Another way, perhaps a faster way, is to use the formula for a trapezium. So I would encourage you to get used to using that formula. And we can see the shape of the trapezium is this green area right here. It has that shape. And so let's draw that. All right. So the trapezium, in this case, has this shape. And so the formula for that trapezium, here we have uh, sides A and B and the height of C. And so the surface area to calculate that would be equal to um, length A plus B in brackets times the height of C. And we're going to divide that by 2. Okay. So here we have that A area here, here we have that A, that B length here, and here we have that C height there, all right? So A, A is 18 million metric tons. So let's calculate this. We have 18, I'll put M for million, plus the B length is 24, 24 million in brackets times the height Right here is 290 minus 230. 290 minus 230. Okay. 18 million minus, I'm sorry, 18 million plus 24 million is 42 million, M for million, times 290 minus 230 is 60. And that's going to equal 2,520. Divide that by 2. Again, million. And that's going to equal the final answer. Let's see if I can. I'm running out of space, so I'll just make a, kind of an arrow showing. Let's look over here. The final answer is going to be right over here. 2,520 million divided by 2 is going to give us the final answer of 1,260 million. So a much faster way to arrive to the same answer. Okay, and you could add the the six zeros if you wanted to that. So it'd be 1.2 billion, I guess, uh, 1.26 billion. Um, but here we can see again that using the trapezium formula, we arrive to the same answer as taking the surface area of two triangles and then uh, subtracting them from each other. Okay, so that's the answer to question A. And uh, in the next video, which will be linked below. Uh, we'll go over answering B, changes in producer surplus. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment those questions below, and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you.